I'm sure you've heard about ChatGPT and was amazed by the technology. Well, what if I told you that you could build your own version of ChatGPT in just 15 minutes? By the end of this video, you'll know how to build a ChatGPT clone just like this one. This video gets me like extremely excited. So let's go. Since ChatGPT doesn't work half of the time because it just cannot handle the load, I decided to build my own version. But first, a disclaimer. This is a programming video, but it's not super complicated and we won't be training machine learning models nor doing any clever AI tricks. We are going to use the public API from OpenAI to build this. However, I will dive into how to use this API to build your own apps and share some of my tricks to using it. And while we're not going to be doing anything too complicated, basic knowledge of JavaScript is highly recommended. And some knowledge of a modern framework like Nuxt or React is highly recommended as well, because it will allow you to follow this uh, video a lot more easy. We will also use Tailwind uh, CSS, but the usage is going to be very simple and basic, so you don't have to know it. This video also assumes that you have VS Code or some other favorite uh, text editor installed, and Node.js is already running. I will link to all those tools and tutorials in the description below. Also, if you have any questions or anything is not clear, I'd be more than happy to answer either in the comments or on the Hacking Modern Live Discord. Okay, let's cover a few basic concepts in the GPT-3 API. The GPT-3 API is essentially an autocomplete, right? So if I say the little boy went to and asked it to complete, it says to the store and tells a whole story about it. If we say, what did the egg say to the chicken? It will answer this question. What's cocking? If we give it a more precise example, how can I help you? Man, tell me a joke. AI. And it will continue the conversation of what the AI answers. And we say human, tell me another one. And so essentially, if we just extract the AI text and the human text, we have a chat. And that's what we're going to be using in order to create our API. There's a number of different parameters we can define, and we need to, to define stop functions or stop text every time we have this or this in the response, because that means that either the human finished or the AI finished. We will inject the human text and the AI will inject the AI text. And this is how the conversation is going to be going. However, if we want it to be more precise in its completions, we can give it instructions before that pattern. So we can say the following is a conversation with an AI assistant. And that gives the AI more context. We don't see that much here, but basically in some of the answers, you will see a lot more details. We start there, and essentially the final prompt will have all the instructions and all the guidelines we want for the AI to answer. Let me know in the comments below or on our Discord if you would like to learn how I took it from here to drawing pictures and knowing who its creator is. First, you really want to install PNPM. PNPM is almost like NPM, but much faster and uh, takes less space. So all the commands from now uh, will be running on PNPM. So first we run PNPM DLX, Naxi create clone GPT. And that creates uh, the basic project folder. So let's go to clone GPT. NPM install. And on VS Code. We go to the OpenAI website, go to View API Keys, and create a new API key. Copy that one, go back to VS Code, create.env, OpenAI API key, and post that one. Don't worry, after the recording of that video, I will delete that API key. Next, we go to next config TS and add here runtime config and open AI API key process that env open AI API key. Next, we install the dependencies Nuxt.js and Tailwind CSS. So we can use Tailwind because that's what uh, OpenAI uses in the interface as well. 
And just because I love Tailwind, it's awesome. And next icon, because we'll need icon site. Isn't that cool how quickly PNPM just installs it? All right, let's add it to the models that we have loaded. And we'll need an API. So we can use the Naxi model to create it. We'll call it GPT-3 because that's easy. Next, we just type npm dev. And we have the app up and running. You can ignore the warnings because we just don't have any HTML running at the moment. And once we launch it, that's what we get. The default uh, next presentation. And once we have it running, next step is go to chat GPT itself. Make a simple chat. And then as we find here, main copy the element and paste it inside our code instead of the welcome. Let's see what we have in our application. Ta -da. Doesn't look exactly the way it should be, but it's getting there. Now we'll start cleaning it up. First, let's delete all those, those buttons here, right? These ones. Second, we need to replace the icon here and remove that, that button here, which also does nothing. Let's start one by one. Let's find those buttons. Button number one and button number two. No more buttons here. Let's change the icon. And the icon is here uh, with all this data here. We're going to remove all of that and replace it with an icon. We have that, but no background. So let's add a little bit of a background. In Tailwind, to add the background, you just say BG and the color. It will take Indigo 500. And we have here the color. There it is. And another button. And we have everything clean except for the sizing. So let's fix that now. Edge screen in Tailwind basically says resize it to the full size of the screen. And there we go, we have it resized to the size of the screen. Now that we have all of that here defined and looks proper, let's start defining the logic of the front end. We're going to start with the script and we need a few things. Right? One thing we need is the message being typed. So in uh, Vue.js or Nux.js, this is how you define variables uh, that are reactive, so connected to something external messages and here we will define an array that will hold all the existing messages we have now each message is going to have the actor either the i or human and the message first message we will have is hello how can i help you here we have a sample conversation between the AI and the human. And next, we define a function that will, at the moment, add to the array, but in the future, submit the actual message. So, submit message. If the message is empty, nothing to submit. And if the message is not empty, we add a new message from the human. Clear the message, so if we're waiting for the next message from the human. And the code is ready. Now let's find the text area where the message is being written and hook it up with the code we just wrote. So key press enter exact prevent equals submit message. Now, what did we just write? At the event of pressing on a button, which button? Enter and only enter. So shift enter does not count prevent the default action which means don't submit the form and call the function submit a message now let's do the same thing on the click of the button so at click submit 
message and also prevent so nothing will be called now in order for all of that to work we need to connect those messages to the front end we try to find where the message list is here they are so we only need one because we're going to be repeating it as many messages as there are in the array so let's delete that and we'll say this one we are repeating for message in messages now for each of those messages we're gonna just print the message depending on who is the actor we're gonna change the icon the AI let's make it green and put a CPU icon and this is what we got the three messages were out with the CPU or the human icon now to make it a bit cooler let's uh, change the background as well we'll take that that background from here and we say if the actor human it's one color if it's the ai it's a little bit brighter and we got exactly that design and now if you write here a message then for some reason that doesn't add it oh because we forgot to tie the message here with the code base and we do that by taking the text array and saying that the model of that message is message. Let's see if that works. After a bit of a refresh, it works perfect. Now, let's go and write our API. In order to build the API, what we need to do is we need to take the config and to get the API key that we defined in the um, next file, next config. And we start with defining the prompt. In this case, I have the prompt defined in advance. So, the following is a conversation with an AI assistant trained by a YouTube channel called Hacking Modern Life, or HTML for short. The assistant is helpful, creative, clever, and very friendly. The assistant always goes into details. The assistant provided very detailed explanation for his answers. He is very, very boss. The assistant marks code with markdown that part is extremely important otherwise it won't mark code with markdown the assistant always provides code samples when it can and we define the first two messages on the back end as well now we define the messages we get the previous messages that were sent okay that needs to be async gets the messages that were sent from the front end and concatenates them to those messages already here then it adds to the prompt all the additional messages in, and maps it to a format of message.actor and message.message .message. so in the end what we have is a prompt that includes lists of uh, ai colon what ai answered and then human and what the human answered of the whole history up until that point now we take that prompt and basically just send it to open ai and i'm gonna go over the request here so the request goes to api openai.com v1 completions sends it in post sends con application json and the openai api key next it sends inside the body which model we're going to be using in this can, case it's text davinci 003 uh, the prompt that we just designed the temperature the temperature goes between zero and uh, one with the closer to zero it is more pred predictable and precise and closer to one it's more creative and imagine it we want it to return a maximum of 512 tokens because we don't want long detailed answers that will cost us a lot of money but won't actually bring us too much of a result top p is a bit hard to explain but it basically defines how the algorithm is going to be searching for its next word for most of my uh, tests so far 1.0 works the best next frequency penalty means how unlikely or how much we want the model not to repeat the same words or the same sequence in this case we don't want it to have any penalty for repetition repetition because we have a lot of repetitions between the ai and the human messages presence penalty again 
how much do we want to prevent things that are already in the uh, prompt from appearing. And then every time the string gets to human or AI, we want it to stop, which means it got to the response of the next actor. We take all that, submit it to the API, await a JSON, and return as the result the first choice that the API returns, because the API can return more than one choice. An important thing is that we return the, the reason that the um, completion has finished. It can be either length, so it ran out of tokens, or stop, which means it finished the completion. We're always looking for a stop, but we just pass it to the front end to decide what to do with it. Now let's go to the front end. In this message submission, we add uh, the request itself. After the human message, we got the response of the human added it to the messages. Now we add the request to the backend. Request to the backend goes. Okay, every time we have an await, the function needs to be async. So we call that local API. We take uh, all the messages we have except for the first one, because that one is a test one, and we send it as post. Now. I'm going to remove all the test ones from here. And if the response we got is 200, we take the JSON and we push into the list the response of the AI and clean the message. All right, let's see if that works. What can you do? And we got a response. I can answer questions, provide code, tell me a joke. What do you call an alligator in a vest? An investigator. Yes, that's a good joke. Okay, that concludes our basic clone GPT tutorial, which basically does what ChatGPT does and in essentially the same way. But wait, there's more. I promised you superpowers. So let's check out which superpowers does clone GPT have. And the first superpower I'm gonna show you is it can talk and listen. What is a snowman? A snowman is an object created by humans from snow. It typically consists of three large balls of snow, typically about the size of a human head, stacked on top of one another and sometimes with a carrot nose and pull eyes, buttons and a scarf added for facial features and decoration. Snowmen can also be decorated with hats, scarves, gloves, sticks, and other items. Look at that. It even drew the snowman. And let's ask it to modify it. And now, it makes a green snowman. Isn't that like super cool? But that's not all. ClonGPT can also take a full screenshot of the whole thread, so you can share it. And one of my absolute favorite features is that you can modify what ClonGPT answers. So for example, if I say, how was your day? It said it was excellent and as always, GPT-3 is very positive. I hated my day. It was annoying because it was raining the whole day. So I just modified what GPT-3 answered. And now I can continue the conversation from here. What was annoying about your day? The rain was very loud and seemed to never end. It made it difficult to concentrate and focus on the task I was doing. Was it annoying to walk around the city? It was definitely annoying walking around the city on a rainy day. And because we are basically feeding uh, GPT-3 with both the questions and the answers, we can easily modify uh, the answers as we go along. And uh, GPT-3 will just pick it up and continue from that spot on. How does it work? I'm going to show you quickly what do we do with API in order to create those commands. So the Final prompt we use for the uh, clone GPT is the following is a conversation with an AI assistant. The AI assistant was trained by a YouTube channel called Hacking Modern Life, or HML for short. The assistant is helpful, creative, clever, and very friendly. The assistant always goes into details. The assistant provides very little explanation for his answers. It is very, very boss. The assistant always surrounds code with markdown. Remember that? So it will give markdown examples and always provides code examples when it can. When asked to generate an image, generate an image generation prompt, congratulate the human and finish the response with the image prompt on a separate line. Don't output the image, don't ask to write a prompt. So when we basically asked uh, GPT-3, uh, what is a snowman? You see that we got the response. And then at the end, it says the image with a prompt. So what clone GPT essentially does is extracts this do image 
command with the pump inside and feeds it into an external um, stable diffusion engine to do it. Now, GPT-3 is smart enough to modify the pump based on what you feed it. So if I add here, make it green, the pump that returns is a green snowman made of three stacked thrombles. So it knows that make it green refers to the pump it just generated. The crazy part is that clone GPT for some reasons sometimes decides to draw images by itself when it thinks that it can illustrate something clearer to the illustration. Um, if you want to play with clone GPT, it's publicly available at the URL chat.hackml.cloud. And the full source code of clone GPT is available at the Hacking Modern Life GitHub repository and linked in the description below. By the way, if you want to learn how to better pump and uh, work with ChatGPT and get it to do things beyond the basics, watch this video that I recently released where I go into detailed prompts and a, a detailed guide on how to use ChatGPT. If you want to learn in more details how CloneGPT works, including all the source code, and basically learn from it, the source code is available at the GitHub of uh, Hacking Modern Life in the repository, and the link for that is in the description below. Oh yeah, and one more thing we did not cover in the video, but is covered in the source code, is how does clone GPT stream the response? So when I ask the clone a question, you see that it slowly streams uh, the response back instead of waiting for the whole um, API response to come back. And we do that by passing stream to in the um, GPT-3 request. And also in the source code, you will find transformers that can cut the response either on new line or by length. So the response to the browser goes in chunks of 15 characters. That's been a lot, but I really hope that you learned something from this video. Generative AI is here to stay, which GPT-3 is at the front of this revolution. I am very excited to see what you will build with this. Be sure to visit our Discord community and show the most amazing things you can make with these and other algorithms. And as always, see you soon with a fresh new digital life hack. Speaking of algorithms, don't forget to like this video to tell the YouTube algorithm that more people should see it. And subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any of the future digital life hacks. Until next time, see ya!